Folks, are you trying to write a research paper with maximal impact? There are three pet peeves that you need to successfully avoid in order to make your paper much more attractive and effective. In a sense, these are each the counterpoints of the things that you should positively do to make your research paper attractive. So let's run through this list very fast. In this vid, we'll just go over the second one, which has to do with making legible figures, but in order, their report organization, legible figures, and effective use of your references. Let's focus in on that second topic, creating effective and legible figures. Hello, I'm Dr. Aliana J. Marin, otherwise known as Dr. AJ, and you're joining me for AI After Hours, where we normally discuss artificial intelligence, but we're taking a brief detour right now into the art and craft of writing effective research papers. This particular vid is part of a series on pet peeves. In other words, the antithesis of what we're trying to do. The first things are the gotchas or the goofuses or the things that make your faculty member go, Arr, or your editor go, Arr, or, you know, the reviewer just to say, it's either revise or resubmit, or maybe even don't publish because it's just not uh, communicating well. So here's the things that can go wrong. Number one, tables without proper headings. You need to, for every table, have a title, have a caption underneath, prep, preferably. Same for figures. Uh, you, it helps if you put some sort of caption at the top. If not, the figure caption itself must be clear and detailed and specific. In the tables, you need headings at the top. In the figure, suppose it's a graph. So, you know, x, y axis. Make the numbers on the axes legible. This is a particular pet peeve of mine because so often students will grab something put out by their program and just sort of cut and paste and shove it in, but it's illegible, you know, it's illegible. And what I advocate takes time, but it greatly ups the visual appeal of what you're doing, and so it's really worthwhile. Take your graph, plop it into PowerPoint, smooth out any rough edges. What I'm what I often do, and it's time consuming but very helpful, is I will put a white box with no border covering up the, the uh, numbers as they exist on the axes and overwrite using uh, PowerPoint uh, text boxes the numbers in a clearer, more distinctive, visually and understandable manner. So you might have fewer numbers but have them bolder a little bit larger in font size, whatever it is that your reader needs to be able to easily understand the scale of the material that you have. Similarly, your legend. The legends that are put out by most computer programs, if you're up close to your computer screen, you can understand them, but when you take them into a paper, mm, you lose a lot. So create your own legend box. Make it large enough, make it clear enough, make it distinct enough so that people can understand what's in your figure. You may wind up inserting a few little uh, captions or labels on various curves. You know, label, arrow, and indicate what a line or what a curve is all about. This is extra effort, but it's well worth the, worth the time. Shoot for, this is another aspect of the whole legibility thing, shoot for maximal contrast in your text versus ground. It is easier to read black on light than it is to read white on dark. So if you have control over the colors of the text and the, and the ground at all, shoot for very, very light background, even if you have your text in colored boxes, light ground, black text. Go for bold, simple fonts that are easy to read against that. Expand the size of the font as much as you can and still not just trip over the size of whatever boxes you're working with. So let's briefly recap where we are and what we've been doing so far and how it fits into the bigger context. You're in AI After Hours with Dr. AJ 
except lately this hasn't been AI, it's been how to write a research paper. You're in one of a series of vids on pet peeves, which are the antithesis of what we're trying to achieve. We've been focusing in this vid on how to create legible figures. This is one of a set of vids. The previous ones have dealt with organization. And then also after this vid on figure legibility, we're going to have some material coming up on crafting and correctly citing a good set of references. That'll be ultra important, so look for that one. Thanks for joining me. It's Dr. AJ. We'll see you soon.